and a copy of this will be uh, of this recording will be given to James at the end uh, later today. So one thing I wanted to highlight here is that yes, this Muni portal is similar to the DBI portal, but um, this one has the SF Gov in it. So this is going to be your portal, sfgov.wastetracking.com. Uh, a few things here that we see: the pictures in rotation, logo up here, um, the the text here, and then there's two buttons, right? One is to log in, and one is to create your debris recovery plan. We're not going to focus on this one so much today. We're just going to go ahead and uh, you know talk about how to log in and and how the system functions. James has already kind of scrolled down and gone through these different reports. Um, there are two reports available. One is called recovery reports, and one is the material reports. So eventually down the road, we're going to start to see some trends uh, here and some spikes and, um, you know, that type of stuff uh, as far as the data goes. And then also your total tons as far as what's been disposed, recycled and reused. Down below, we have the other report, which is the material reports. Um, this just gives a, an idea as to what materials are being tracked so far, you, uh, you know, based on the couple of projects in the system. It's just these four right now. And then down below, there's just another way to log in. Here's our uh, tech support number if you need any assistance, and then live chat uh, as well. So I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm basically going to log in as a city admin. So city administrators, city reps, they're all going to have a, a, a login set up. Uh, right now, we have a, a couple uh, people from the uh, airport set up, but um, we're going to really uh, you know, get everyone set up. Uh, really, really soon. And so the way to log in is you enter your email and your password. Once you have your credentials set up, you hit login and you are now taken to this uh, dashboard here. So this dashboard just gives you an overall view of your project listings. Um, today we're going to focus on how to set up a, uh, uh, a, a project here. So we're going to be using this create plan for client. Um, but also, just a couple of things. If, if you know, when you log in and if you're searching for a project, you could always run a search here. Uh, for example, if if I'm logging in and I want to search for a airport project, I can type in AIR, and this will give me all my different airport projects that are already already have been set up. So a lot of the stuff in here is our test projects, but uh, for example, you see the projects that are upcoming. You see any that are pending. Uh, these that are already in the active status, uh, if there's any submitted for final, any that have been completed, any that are in the middle of being set up under the plans for client, which we're going to be focusing on today, would be listed here. So it just um, gives you a nice breakdown of all the different sections of the system and the different statuses of where those projects exist. So again, you would just search your sponsoring agency. So for airport AIR, Department of Public Works, DPW, um, you know, that type of deal. Um, so now we're going to focus on setting up a project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to create a plan for client. So we are acting as the city admin. Uh, the city admin is the one who's going to be doing the initial project setup. Uh, my understanding is that in some cases it may also be the city rep. So um, if wh whoever is initiating the project um, would go in here and create plan for client. The first thing it's going to ask us is, is uh, for a zip code. So for today, I'm using a airport project as an example. I'm using this zip code, 94128. I'm going to go down this list here, search this, this uh, list of zip codes. Keep in mind that these are not all the zip codes that are just within the city and county jurisdiction of San Francisco. Some of these may be outside. If the port or the bridge authority or the airport is outside, we've expanded this to include those zip codes. So your zip code sh should be listed here. If not, you know, let, let me know, but it should be. Um, we're going to go ahead and click on Create. And now we're going to be entering our project information. So you see here, step one, adding new projects. One thing that's important to highlight here is at any point you can hit save plan. So for example, if, if I'm the city admin and then um, later on the city rep is going to also be logging in and continuing filling out the rest of the you know project information, the, the main goal here for the city admin is to at least enter the project name, project address, uh, perhaps the project or permit number, 
Um, and, and this stuff is going to vary a little bit different from department to department, right? So one department might use a permit number, a different department might use a project number, but the goal is to just get it kind of kicked off the ground and uh, just get it initiated. So I'm going to use this here as an example. I just have it, have this uh, data here as the SFO Terminal 2 Renovations. I'm using this address here. And if I have the, the project information down below, great. Um, if not, then I can just go ahead and just hit save plan. So at, at this point, it, it's all going to depend on the city admin and what information they have. If they have the permit slash project number, great. I'll go ahead and enter it. Um, if not, then I would just hit save plan and go ahead and just leave it as is. Uh, at this point, I would, you know, we, we can see the project is set up in the plans for client section. And the city rep could at this point also log in. It could be, you know, a day later, a week later, um, whenever later. And basically, this is the project that has been initiated by the city admin. So the city rep can log in and just continue here or, or click on start here, either one of these, and just kind of continue with the remainder of the project information that needs to be filled out. Um, so the next thing is filling out the project information. So let's go ahead and just plug in some information in here. Let's just say it's project number 2020, uh, 12 to 20. Uh, the next thing is selecting your project type. So we are doing a airport example here. So let's go ahead and say it's a airport alteration. Um, just to kind of expand and show all the different departments here, this is what we have in here. Uh, the next thing is you're going to always select municipal here for the building type. These are all municipal projects. The sponsoring agency. Here we have a list of all the different sponsoring agencies. And this is all configurable in the settings. If anything changes later on, uh, it's very easy to uh, to remap these. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose the airport commission for this one. Um, this part here, your project may or may not have uh, a a block slash lot number. It's all going to depend on if it's within the the you know San Francisco jurisdiction, um, you know, and, and and if it does have a block or lot number. Um, in, in this case, uh, for the San Francisco airport, you know, we can just type in something like SFO or, or San Francisco airport. Um, but if, again, if your department and your, your project is within the, you know, the jurisdiction of San Francisco, you are going to have a block lot number most likely, and you'll be able to use this hyperlink. And this points out to the, uh, GIS mapping. Um, and from here, you just run a search for your address and it would give you a, uh, you know, the block slash lot number here. Uh, the next thing is the start date. So let's assume this project is starting, or let's say it started already November 2nd, and it's going to go for at least, you know, a year or 13 months or so. Um, the next thing is we're going to specify the project cost. Uh, let's just call it a million. Next thing is the square footage. Let's just call it 3,000 square feet. And for the description here, this is going to be the scope of work. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and call this various renovations in Terminal 2. Um, ne next is, uh, as far as what are requirements, you, you can see the, these uh, asterisks here. So if you have your... Um, MRRP, you can go ahead and provide a scanned copy of that. This uh, accepts PDF files only. So if you have that, uh, notice it's not required, but if you have it, you can go ahead and upload it here uh, and uh, get a scanned copy of that uploaded to this project. Down below, we have a set target recovery rate. So because of Cal Green, the requirement is 65%, right? But some projects might have to adhere to a higher diversion rate. So um, if it's doing a lead, 
some type of lead project or if it's just you know for whatever reason the project needs to target a higher uh, recovery rate you can up your your targets uh, but again the minimum is 65 percent and it goes up to a hundred percent so you could do 65 70 75 80 and so on so in this case we're just going to leave it at 65 percent um, the next thing is your designated contact so who is going to be uh, you know on this project as far as uh, it could, it could, you could list here yourself you, as the city admin. You could list here the city rep as well. You could list here your contractor. So, if I click on add slash edit, it should allow me to add um, any one of these people here, as well as add a new contact as well. So, for this point, uh, we're just going to go ahead and just leave this blank for now, um, or I'll, I'll go ahead and assign. You know, uh, let's see if James is on here. I'll go ahead and assign uh, Kalia. So I'm going to go ahead and do save contact. And at this point, uh, all of step one project information is filled out. So we can go ahead and hit save plan. So again, uh, this is something where the city admin and the city rep would, you know, collaborate with one another and Again, the city admin could fill out just the general information. The city rep could fill out the project information. The city admin could fill out the general information and some of the project information. Uh, and then the city rep could come in and, and fill out the remainder of the information. So it's going to you know, vary. And I, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit, James, where uh, um, depending on the situation, it could be, you know, the, the I think city. we could, mm -hmm. yeah, we could save that for the end manny because i think there will be some um departmental processes that are that differ from agency to agency so but we could we could park that folks for the end um we'll let manny keep going through at this point um we're heading into the guts of form c so step in your breadcrumb trail up there step one is really just the top portion of form c uh and the and and remember we're now creating the init the, the template for a contractor to fill out. So steps two through five is really the guts of Form C. Why don't you go into that, Manny? Okay, so in order to get to that point, we will need to you know, hit save plan. Uh, I guess here we could highlight that you don't want to move on to the next step because this is where the contractor is gonna be uh, identifying the materials, how they're gonna be transporting those materials, which facility is gonna be receiving those materials. So at this point, it's, it's just kind of important to highlight that you don't really need to proceed to the next step. This is gonna be the contractor um, interjecting here and just you know, basically doing those next four steps. So I've hit save plan like five times. You only need to hit it once, um, but once it saves, you get that confirmation. And then you can just go back to the home screen here. You go to the plans for client section. And at this point, we are now assigning the project. So. You don't have to do this, you know, right away. It, it, it could be saved in there for a week, a month. But once you do identify who that contractor is going to be, it could be Pankow, Skanska, whoever that contractor is. Notice the contractor info right now is blank. No phone number in, in there either. So the goal is to get to this point where you go back into the plans for client and you then go here and you, you know, first of all, you, you identify your project. And then uh, you could go in here and do functions, assign project. And this assign function gives, uh, gives two results. One is either the contractor has used Green Halo before and is identified as a uh, existing Green Halo user, or the second part would be uh, it's a new, green, new to Green Halo, first time user to Green Halo. So, um, I'll give you an example. If I type in the contractor email that I'm going to be transferring this this to, if I enter this email here and I hit find, it's going to say that the email address is not located. So it's going to essentially invite them to create a new account. Notice how it says invite. And that's fine. Um, it, it just requires the contractor to register you know, their one-time uh, Green Halo account. Um, otherwise, if we take off the 777 and this is an existing Green Halo contractor uh, email, it, when we hit find, 
you'll see that now it says assign. So it's just basically going to transfer the project out of your uh, your plans for client section and into the contractor's account. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And email address was located, assign project to this email. We're going to go ahead and hit assign. And at this point, it's important to highlight that the project is still in your plans for client section and you should only um, assign the project once. So by that, I mean you're waiting for the project to get accepted, right? So you don't want to assign it to DPR and then assign it to Skanska. Only one person and one person at that contractor company or that, that, that GC is going to be able to accept the project. Um, so in this case, mmendoza.wt at gmail.com, that person, you're, you're waiting essentially for that person to accept the project. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over screens for just a second. This is my contractor account. So no, notice how I have in progress 17. If I refresh, it's still going to be in progress 17. Um, I should have just now received a green halo notification this one here new project has been assigned it gives you the project address city and county of san francisco there should also be a permit slash uh, project number there so this is the one that we had entered and at this point i need to go in here and um accept this project let me just go ahead and log out just to make sure that nothing's uh you know as far as the system accepting the project so i'm going to go ahead and click here and i should get a confirmation just saying that the project has been accepted. So now I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And if you remember, um, let me see. There was uh, 17 projects in there, right? So let's see. Now there should be 18 in here. So that project that was reassigned to me as the general contractor, I accepted it. Now I it went from 17 plus one to 18 and it should be the first project listed here so uh we we've gone through the the process of how the city admin and the city rep you know collaborate and basically get the project initiated now we are you know working as the contractor filling out those steps two three four and five basically the materials transportation and all that so i'm going to go in here and just click on uh the green halo link or start here um and this this training is, is focused more on, you know, the city admin side. So we're just going to kind of fly through this, but it's good for you to just see how the contractor interacts with the system. And uh, one thing that's important to highlight here is if, if I'm a contractor like DPR or Pankow, whoever it is, I most likely more than half of the time I have done work, uh, you know, in the Bay Area, I have used the Green Halo system perhaps at the city of Oakland, city of San Jose, wherever, but I've, I've used the system. And so I'm very familiar with this already. Um, this might be, you know, new to you, but to the contractor, most likely, if not that specific person, someone at their, you know, you know, like their receptionist, for example, or someone um, who manages the green halo stuff for their company has done this before. And so this interface should be really familiar to them. There's just going to be a couple of things that are, you know, a little different that they might need to, you know, like if this is a new function here, so just little things like that, but it's still the same interface and still, um, you know, within the same, you know, it's not nothing new to them. So at this point, uh, as the contractor, if I wanted to, I could go in, go in here and add additional designated contacts. That might be the only thing that they want to do here um, at this point. But other than that, everything else should be Good to go i should be able to just move on to the next step if i wanted to i could add a little bit more into the description but everything looks good here and i'm just going to move on to the next step the next step is identifying those materials so um there's there's a nice message up here that just kind of uh is guiding me in case of any of you know identifying any hazardous materials but at this point um i can enter you know, or identify what type of materials I'm going to be generating. So in this case, it might be, I don't know, maybe uh, I could I choose cubic yards or tons. Cubic yards tends to be a little easier. So if this is an uh, airport project and let's say uh, 
a 20 cubic yard container is going to be dedicated to this project. And the project is 52 weeks. So we could do 52 times 20 is going to give us about a thousand cubic yards. So we could go ahead and specify a thousand cubic yards. Really, it's a thousand forty, but we'll just round it down. Um, notice how the materials here are broken out by reuse, recycle, and dispose. So construction debris has to be recycled. Things like uh, concrete should not be disposed, but it could be, be claimed as uh, something like if it's crushed and and uh, claimed as reuse or or backfill, you could put it here in this uh, salvage or recycling column. Um, in this case, I'm just going to specify maybe 200 cubic yards of concrete. And so some of these projects, the contractors are going to, you know, get very granular with them. Others, they might just say, I'm just, I just have a dedicated C&D bin and that's it, move on to the next step. But if it's a lead project, they might specify four or five uh, clean waste streams or source separated materials. So this is a list of all the materials that you've enabled for this system. You, again, you control this in your settings. At the very bottom, we have some uh, non-recoverable materials, basically hazardous wastes. Once I've gone through this here and I've specified the material or materials that I'm going to be generating, I can now move on to the next step. And James, uh, let me know if I'm going too fast, if you want to interject on that previous screen yeah i was just gonna thank you manny appreciate it i was gonna yeah. type something in the comment section but if, uh we just pause this is um the functions currently performed by form e in your regulation packet um and uh often the contract specs so uh these um volume to weight conversion ratios no longer need to be manually performed uh the system is doing it on the back end for you uh for the contractor and and it is also going to be calculating um, as you go along the recovery rate, uh, and we'll get to that momentarily. That's going to come when you start selecting your facilities and your end markets. But right now, the system is tracking what a thousand cubic yards of mixed C and D debris converts to in tons. It will have a different conversion rate for concrete, for drywall. Um, so this replaces for me. Thanks, Manny. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you notice, I just actually toggled over to tons, right? So if I prefer to input in tons, I can, but notice how my cubic yards already converted over to tons. Uh, same thing for the concrete. So I'll just leave it in cubic yards and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is the uh, transporter method. So we'll, we'll move on to the next step. And here we're basically identifying how are these materials leaving SFO and that's all we're worried about, not where they're going just yet, but just how are they, you know, uh, getting removed from the, the project site. So in this case, we have three transportation methods. Uh, the easiest one to cover is the self-hauling. So if, there, if the project allows self-haul, um, then that would be the, the case here. Move on to the next step. Uh, most likely, a lot of these projects are going to require either choosing from a registered transporter or a debris ro uh, slash roll off service. So we'll go ahead and just kind of go through this here. Uh, if I choose the debris box roll off services, uh, these, these are basically essentially companies that provide dumpsters. I'll go in here and I'll do add edit vendor. And these are all the vendors that are uh, able to accept uh, or, or place dumpsters on site and then haul away the material. So it looks like at the very bottom of the list, there's 46 total. Um, it looks like you're also able to add a debris box uh, provider here at the bottom. And you can also run a search, right? So I saw Wanda, Wanda at the bottom. Notice how if I type in Wanda, it starts to filter that out. Um, for these purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and choose A1 Planet products. And I'll do save selected transporter. Um, hey, Manny, can I just interject really quickly here? Yeah, yeah. Because um, we do have some really hyper-specific regulations in the city about who can haul mixed debris. It has to be a registered transporter. just want the audience to know that um, the Department of the Environment controls which vendors, haulers, transporters are loaded in the system. So uh, all of them that are in there now are compliant. So you don't have to worry about kind of cross-checking that. Your city reps, though, will want to be on the alert when they see that self-haul or a new vendor was added that would be the time that they could fall back to the traditional process of let me check the sfe department of the environment website for the current list of haulers or 
Um, don't need to do that actually because the current list is embedded in here. Uh, if you if one of your contractors is adding a hauler or, or selecting self haul, um, you can check in with the Department of the Environment to make sure that we get them registered. Um, that that's important to call out. Got it. Got it. And yeah, so. Um, the next one is going to be the registered transporter. So if I click on this and I do add edit vendor, this kind of mirrors the uh, other list, but I think this one just has a lot more. Um, I, I think we're at like two, 300, three, oh, 400. So this one has 330 different, um, you know, uh, vendors here that can essentially, you know, haul away the, the debris. Um, so same same thing applies at the bottom. You can add a new one um, here. You can search, and we're just going to go ahead and stick with the same same A1 Planet products. But I already listed them up here, so I'm I'm not going to list them twice. Um, uh, the difference between these two is these are just transporters. These ones provide a debris box. Let the debris box sit there for days. Stuff gets you know thrown into the debris box, and then it gets hauled away. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just stick with this a1 planet products and i'm moving on to the next step this next step is now identifying where the materials are going to go to so the contractor in this case might work with a1 a1 tells them okay the stuff is going to go to recology go ahead and choose recology um and so uh, at this point it's just identifying where the facility where the where the materials are going uh, as far as which facility and you do have to specify you know for the construction debris uh, it's going to recology. If I try to go to the next step, it's going to say, nope, you need to also specify where the concrete is going, right? So right here, we're seeing all the, the list of all the uh, C and D uh, recyclers. Um, I'll get into just a second as far as what the, the difference is between the ones that say like Marin Resource Recovery, Marin Resource Recovery Lead Project, but essentially it's for projects that are, for, are, are targeting lead. Notice how this excludes the, or disqualifies the ADC, so it's a lower diversion rate. Um, but, but first, let's go ahead and just scroll down and let's look at the concrete. So if the stuff is going to go to, to uh, a concrete crusher, maybe it's going to go to Bay Area Concrete Recycling in San Francisco. That's great. We have the address, phone number. Um, it's listing these locations or these facilities by closest uh, to the project site address. So um, something like, you know, seven miles away from the project address versus four versus at the very bottom, if I were to choose... Um, somewhere like Premier, because it's all the way in San Jose, it's closer to 35 miles. So uh, a bigger impact as far as the carbon footprint. Um, and going back up to the C and D, we could use um, Recology SF here as an example. Again, uh, closest to the project site address, um, but notice the recovery rate, right? So Recology of SF, if, if you are including, uh, you know, the, the ADC, the the most that this project could achieve for the C and D loads is 62%. So a project like this does need to sep source separate uh, most likely some materials. So uh, by that, I mean, if I had only specified C and D and only recology, I wouldn't be meeting the city uh, or, or the municipal um, uh, requirements of 65%. Or if it's 75%, then I definitely would need to source separate more materials um, especially since I'm going with the, the lead project, the ones that disqualify ADC. So um, that's the difference here. I, I don't know if you want to mention anything on this page, uh, James, but otherwise we're ready to move on to the next step. Yeah, I think, no, that, that's a great job. And it really just reinforces folks that the system is going to perform the calculation for the contractor and for you. Um, it's going to calculate 100 tons that are getting recovered with a rate of 62%. That's 62 tons. Um, another 100 tons of concrete getting recovered at 100%. That's 100 tons recovered, and it will in, it will generate the out the um, the diversion rate, the recovery rate, and it will caution the contractor that they are not building a plan that's reaching the minimum rate, um, the minimum rate that you, the city rep, set earlier. Whether you raise it to 75, 85, 100, whatever it is, uh, the the system will let the contractor know you built a plan that doesn't meet the minimum requirement you should go back and source separate more material. Thanks again, Manny. Yep, yep, thanks. So we'll move on to the next step, and this is what James is talking about. It, it basically gives you three notices here. Green check mark, it's it's good. We're good to go. There's a, a exclamation point, and then there's a, a red X. The red X means, you know, it's this, the scenario that I just gave, 62, but the requirement is 65. 
you're not going to hit the, the the minimum 65% requirement. So it just guides you to go back to basically source separate materials, choose higher diverted facilities, you know, that type of stuff. The exclamation point, same thing. It just tells you you're barely okay, but maybe we recommend going back and uh, changing your materials up a little bit. We're not going to focus too much on that because this is more for the uh, the contractor and, and how they basically essentially submit this form or this online form now to you and and you know um, so we're not we're not going to focus too much on that um, here we have the terms and conditions once I've read those I just check here and I'm now ready to go ahead and submit this project for approval I can get a text confirmation of this as well and yep I'm going to go ahead and submit this for approval um, yep let's go ahead and do that So now at this point, if you are set up to get notifications of this, um, so now we're switching back to the um, to the municipal side, right? So I'm, I'm logged in as a city admin. Um, I'm gonna refresh the page, but I just wanna highlight one thing. Notice how upcoming nine, um, I, I don't know if I refreshed before, but it should, it should drop down to upcoming uh, eight pending one, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, I hadn't refreshed, so yeah, it stayed at upcoming nine, but that project uh, is here now in the pending section, right? So uh, a couple things to highlight are um, you're going to get a notification. That notification is going to look uh, like this one here. Let me see if I can pull up an example. New project submitted. Uh, this one here. So it's going to give you... Uh, the, the project address, permit number, and just, uh, you know, this notification, which allows you to log in. Um, James, for this part, is this going to be you and Kalia logging in to review the project, or is this going to be the, the city admin, city rep doing this review? This will be the, th this is a great question. This will be the city rep, and uh, there are circumstances when uh, Chapter 7 regulations are requiring the Department of the Environment so that would be myself or Kalia or Chris, someone else on our team um, are there to perform a sort of secondary optional review. But there's certain requirements, like if it's a full demo or I think the current rate requirement is if it's a project over $100,000, then the Department of the Environment is, um, is there to kind of review the city reps work. Those regulations may evolve shortly, but we can talk about that towards the end. I think what's important to take away here is that as a city rep right now, this is your dashboard. You know that you there's a you've received a notice in in your email saying a project that you're um, monitoring is ready for review for approval. And so, what you will do is come to this dashboard. And Manny showed you that your there's one pending plan right now. There may be hundreds um, at one point, in theory, if all city departments are feeding into this at once. So this is a good time, Manny, to show um, how you could filter the dashboard to see only a department's portfolio. Yep, and so that would be this search function here. So I'll just search uh, AIR and I'll go in here and I'll uh, hit find. And the project that we are you know, just got that notification for is this pending plan, um, this one here that we filled out. So um, if I wanted to enter the project this way, I could just go in this way, or, um, you know, I could go in this way, pending. And at this moment, yeah, it is the one project listed here, so we could enter this way as well. So uh, the, the main goal here though is you did receive that notification, right? And so that notification tells you which project it is, and it tells you, um, you know, the green halo tracking number, permit number, project number, and you're going to basically be able to search it that way as well. So if you um, if you see too many results here, like when we hit find, and this is just, you know, maybe the airport has a thousand projects, then you could also just search specifically by that, you know, tracking number, by that permit number. Um, so yeah, there's different ways to search, but if you wanted to do just all of the department, so AIR would give you all these results. And the goal is to then go into your project, which I've already opened up here, and uh, re review this, um, you know, the, the, the plan or the project that just came in. 
So again, here we have the project information. We've already you know, compiled this together. Here are the designated contacts. Um, here's the account holder information. And at this point, you just see the project status is it's been created, it's been submitted. And the goal is really to hit approve plan on this. Uh, in order to get there, you basically need to look at the project info, the project stats. So something like, you know, what is their estimated recovery rate? Uh, what is the required recovery rate for this project? Um, this gives you a breakdown of the inert and non-inert. This gives you a breakdown of if there's any hazardous stuff, it'll be here in red. Um, and at this point, yeah, that's really what this project stat does. It's really just focusing on this here, right? Is this more than the requirement? Are, is what they're estimating more than the requirement? And uh, the next thing is you can verify the trans transporter method, A1 Planet products. Hey, yeah. Man, I just, just want to interject really quickly. Can you, um, cause you kind of went over the hazardous materials. Um, folks want to just acknowledge that there, there are times that material does have to go to landfill. Um, under our rules and regulations, there is no direct haul to landfill of any discards, but there are times where it's appropriate. And that's when you have hazardous material, could be asbestos containing materials, could be lead based um, uh, materials containing lead paint or, um, any number of contaminants, soils are very common on our projects. And so all of those materials will come with a manifest, some sort of abatement inspection. And earlier when the contractor was building the plan um, and selecting materials, there, if you were to select hazardous materials, um, there they would need to attach, uh, and Manny will show you later where this gets done, they would attach the manifest for you to review that says, you know, this soil tested positive for these contaminants or this is asbestos containing material. Another um, tremendous value of this system is that by them identifying the hazardous materials and supporting with a manifest, Green Halo will not count those tons of soil or contaminated asbestos containing materials in the calculation for diversion. It will not hurt or help the diversion rate. It's zeroed out on both sides of the equation or the recovery rate, I should say. Um, so that happens again intuitively, but your teams will want to make sure that any hazardous materials identified in a plan get backed up by attaching a file of the manifest or abatement inspection report. Thanks, Manny. Yep, yep, thanks, James. And so at, at this point, we've gone through the project info, project stats, transporter method um most likely everything here is going to be you know standard stuff um if they do choose their own hauler like you know how it lets you input your own like add your own um it would say right here user added in red right next to the company um i think i think it's there or in here but you'll, you'll know it says user added so it'll, it'll it'll stand out um in this case we went with one of the uh, provided vendors that were listed there and then the next thing is just going through your recovered materials. So this is, this gives you a breakdown of all the different materials. Um, right now we're just talking about just estimates. So it just gives you estimates. But at the very bottom of this, um, especially if they have several, like like 10 or, or you know so materials listed, at the very bottom there's a nice table that will give you a breakdown of everything. It will say one, two, three, four, five, six, however many materials. And it tells you concrete potentially going here and this many tons construction debris potentially going here. It could also list a couple facilities if they select multiple and this many tons. And it'll do that for every single waste stream. And so at this point, that's really all you need to look at as far as the initial uh, you know, plan for this project. And so we're just gonna go ahead and hit approve plan. Um, that's just kind of continuing the project through the different statuses. Um, if, if you do need to reject the project you can or the plan, you can reject the plan. Um, it will ask you to to add a note, um, and that note might might specify something like, uh, "Please revise your materials uh, for this SFO project. Um, you can't, you know, provide dumpsters or whatever the whatever the the rejection scenario is, or something like, source separate more materials. Um, we know there's going to be a lot of you know, asphalt coming out of this project as well. Please specify the asphalt. Whatever the scenario is, you can reject the plan and then have the contractor fix it and then resubmit it to you. Um, and you do want to add a note for that. That way they know why you're rejecting it. 
Um, in this case, we're just going to assume this is a good plan and we're going to approve it. And let's go ahead and do that. And so now if we take a look, we see that that project got moved out of the pending section and it went just it went from five to six. So we have six active projects here in the system at the moment. If we click on active, that is going to be the, uh, you know, the top project that we just uh, created. So at this point, we have the contractor info in there now. All that all that's good. Um, and notice how it's grayed out. So from your standpoint, these active projects, you don't need to do much with them. The system is going to send out monthly reminders for those that are inactive. So basically about 30 days from now, if I don't start uploading any wait tickets and, and backups and stuff like that, the system is going to send me a friendly reminder to just log in here and, and add tickets. So at this point, we're going to switch over to um, switch over to the contractor side again. And I'm just going to give an example of how the contractor is going to be uploading their way tickets. So same thing here. While their project submitted, they can't upload tickets. But now that you've approved of it, it's, it's now in their approved section. And the contractor, uh, again, most likely they've done this for other projects, other jurisdictions. But uh, just real quickly, the way that they add their tickets is they can do this on the computer. They can do it on their iPad. Most, most of them, especially once they've done this a few times, they prefer to do it on mobile devices just because you don't have to scan a document and do it on the computer. It'll just be really quickly from the phone. It allows you to take a picture of this. So let's assume I have a, a, a wait ticket for mixed construction debris. And I did, I did stick with the facility that I said I was going to be using. But notice here how it does allow me to use other facilities that accept C&D as well. So I'm going to just go ahead and assume Recology of San Francisco. This stuff was hauled by A1, I think it was A1 Planet Products. Uh, my ticket number, 999-888-777. Ticket image, this, this is where the, uh, the wait ticket um, would be uploaded. So this is, this is me just having a scan of that ticket already. The ticket date, um, let's just say it was from yesterday. And then this weight ticket might have been for, I don't know, 12.78 tons. And I'm going to go ahead and submit ticket. So the goal here is to basically just upload all of my weight tickets, right? And this project realistically is going to go for a whole nother year, right? So this, this project would remain from the contractor's perspective in my active account for probably 11, 12 months. Once, once I've uploaded my last weight ticket, I'm going to go ahead and hit submit for final. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit submit for final at this point. And what's going to happen is, uh, oh, so you see here, uh, you know, nor normally I'd have to, you know, I'd, I'd upload all of my weight tickets. And so that 62% is not allowing me to meet the requirement. So let me just go ahead and uh, upload another ticket. Let's just call this one concrete. Let's say the stuff did go to barrier concrete recycling. This one was the A1, we'll just call them products. Ticket number 444-555-666. Choose a different one. Uh, same thing, the stuff was hauled, I guess we'll, we'll just say November, um, for a weight of 18 tons or 18.44 tons notice here we can enter this stuff in cubic yards a lot of concrete crushers they're actually going to just provide cubic yardage like four cubic yards eight cubic yards but in this case let's say we have our weight and we'll go ahead and do submit ticket this should put me over the uh you know requirements here so that when i do submit for final um notice how now i am at a higher diversion rate so everything looks good I'm going to go ahead and uh, submit for final. One thing I do want to point out here, I guess, really quickly is that, um, like James was saying, you can actually upload your hazardous manifests here. So if I have, um, you know, other hazardous and waste materials, and assuming we have facilities in here that do accept hazardous materials, then we're able to select from those facilities. Um, same thing with kind of like the salvage and reuse. If I'm, you know, 
entering a log of different things that went to like Habitat for Humanity or the reuse people, I can do the same thing here. I can specify what type of materials that was. Did the stuff get donated? If so, which facility? Um, here's one here's one for example did the stuff get reused on site maybe the concrete got crushed for backfill um, and it doesn't ask for which facility it went to so just notice that this here um, gives you two options right so salvage and reuse recycle and dispose and so at this point uh, let me see if I can go back a couple of times I'm, I'm ready to submit my project for final so let's go ahead and submit for final And I've read these, uh, you know, the, this message here. Um, you know, we've added a note recently. So if your project contains a large volume of tickets, project review time might take longer. That way you don't feel rushed as far as how long you should, you know, no one should expect for these projects to be reviewed in a day or two, especially if they have a lot of wait tickets. And so I'm going to go ahead and submit this for final. Again, I'm acting as the contractor. I've uploaded two tickets, but realistically, these projects might have 100. And so I'm going to go ahead and submit for final. Are you sure you want to submit this for final? Yes. And this has now triggered to all the city admins and city reps that have this notification enabled. This has triggered um, a notification like this one, new project submitted for final. So this one says for final, same thing, project address, uh, the jurisdiction permit number. And it just gives you an idea as to what the project info is permit number <clears throat> the nice thing on this notification though is it tells you the total tickets so if you get these notifications on your computer your phone um it's going to give you an idea as to how long it's going to take you to review this right two tickets might take two minutes um 100 tickets might take half an hour or so so it just um you know the one thing to notice on these is total tickets and so at this point um we're switching over to the uh, to the city admin side and if we hit a refresh active should go down to five final one and this is now that project again you could search for it by the department AIR you can search by the tracking number permit number all that stuff but if you if you um, you know if departments are clearing out their projects and that type of stuff there really shouldn't be a long list of projects here but if there are again you can search there in this case we just have the one and so we're able to um, you know, click into the project this way. Two things that I want to highlight here are, you know, as more and more projects enter into this system, the the map is actually going to zoom out, right? So you can see this one is, you know, if you know your projects are in this area, um, you're going to be able to, you know, pull open your projects this way as well. Just pull up the pin, click to view project. If your projects are in this area over here, you're going to see the pins kind of located a little bit more. In, in your area that way. So you, eventually you might start seeing pins here, pins over here, pins over here. So you know these are all the airport projects. Maybe these are the, the bridge uh, authority projects over here is maybe the port. So, um, you know, just keep in mind, you also, you're also able to search or, or pinpoint your projects using these pins on the map. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to highlight is these color modules. So green is good. Red is is essentially bad. Gray is neutral, meaning you know if we look at some of these projects that are, are in the active section, some of these projects haven't done any reporting yet, so they just no tickets uploaded. So it's just that's fine. It's just neutral. But for the most part, if you see green, it's going to be good. This one's always going to be red because it's just you know keeping track of disposed tonnage. But the main thing is this one here. Green uh, means that it's more than the required 65% requirement. So if, if it was like 64 or 30%, this module would be in red. And so the goal here is now to just confirm that this really is, uh, you know, compliant. And so, again, we're reviewing a project that's been submitted for final review. We can click on this tracking number to uh, review everything. And this, this has been the same project that we've been reviewing, um, you know, all this morning. So... We, we know that the project information is good. Again, if you need to edit the information, um, you can. One thing that I didn't specify was that, you know, if if Skanska is the contractor on this project initially, and assuming this project went for 13 months, let's assume the six month hit and 
Skanska is no longer the contractor. You can reassign this project at any point to any other, you know, to DPR, to Turner, to uh, QA, whoever it is. You can, uh, you know, assign this project at any point and, and move it out of DPR's account over to Turner Construction, for example. Um, and so now that we've, uh, you know, the project, you got that notification, the goal is to basically approve this project for completion. So we're just going to run through these steps again, project information, all this is, you know, we've already looked at this, but now we really do want to look at the project stats. Did they really perform to what they estimated? Uh, pretty close, right? 84, they actually did better than what they estimated. Um, did they really do all the tonnage that they had said at the beginning, right? So this was like three, maybe 365 total tons, but they only reported 30 tons. Um, most likely those numbers are going to be more in line with a real project, right? One that actually reports several tickets. Um, the next thing is, you know, still the requirement is 65%. Um, and one thing to highlight here is if you recall at the beginning where we, said that we could up the target diversion rate if the project does get you know target for whatever reason lead or something else you would actually see that right here so if i had changed that to 75 you would see that here it would say the recovery rate required for this project is 75 even though the jurisdictional requirement or cal green is only 65. Um, inerts and non-inerts i'll just kind of skip over that um, same thing with hazardous so if at the beginning they didn't estimate any hazardous, but then later on they actually did report hazardous, you would see this pie chart fill up. Now we're seeing the project recovery volume trends. This is basically giving you an idea as to when they're reporting, right? So in, in, a, in a real project, you're going to be able to see, you know, the stuff that they reported in October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So this trend chart is going to look a, a lot nicer for those projects. And I can give a quick example of... Uh, you know, one of those here. Uh, while, while that loads, I'll, I'll uh, just kind of keep going through this here. So the next thing is the transportation method. Most likely nothing changed here. It's still the A1 Planet products, recovered materials. Now you see the uh, total actual materials recovered. It gives you a breakdown of, you know, the concrete and the mixed construction debris. Uh, same thing here. It's, it's still giving you that same breakdown. At the very bottom of the table, it's going to give you now a side-by-side -side comparison, material selected versus actually used. So if I had selected concrete, mixed construction debris, clean wood, and metal, but I actually reported concrete, mixed c and metal, clean wood, plastics, cardboard, it would just give you a comparison of, of what was selected to what was actually used. Same thing with the um, facilities, right? If I, had, if I hadn't ch chosen for the C&D ecology and instead I chose Davis Street, we would see Davis Street here. So this is just a way to give you a comparison of, of what they planned to the actual report at the end. Um, the next thing is the facilities and tickets. And this is really where your, your final compliance verification occurs. So um, by that, I mean that all of the weight tickets that the contractor has uploaded, this is where they exist. They're going to be listed here, broken out by, by facility. So if, if there's 20 tickets for Recology, you're going to see those under this table. If there's 100 for Bay Area Concrete Recycling, you're going to see those in this table. Um, here we have the project recovery volume trends again. This, this trend chart is going to look a lot nicer. Uh, give you an example like this one here. So most projects are going to be doing like a, like a, a whale type of um, you know, trend, meaning they're going to do all their demolition at the beginning. And then it's just kind of, you know, they're going to maybe stockpile the stuff. And then at the end, they might have a, a huge one last like dump run, for example. So a lot of the stuff is going to trend this way. In this case, this project is trending upwards here in January, February, March. Um, they didn't really do any reporting for these months. So it's just to give you an idea of what this is going to look like. Same thing with the pie graphs, more colors in there for the different materials and different facilities that are being tracked. Um, so go going back to our project, so assuming you have a project with maybe 20 or 30 tickets, you could view the tickets this way through the, through the system by clicking on view and making sure that the, uh, the ticket number matches up to what was inputted, that the weight matches up to the weight, the dates, um, you know, the city origin, um, it, this is going to be on, on, on you and how you basically verify 
compliance on this project. Um, but here we have an example of one-way ticket from Davis Street Transfer Station. So if this ticket is okay, then I would just look at it and just close it. That's it. If there's an error with this one-way ticket, um, I can go ahead and reject this way ticket and request for them to re-upload. If the origin says something like Los Angeles and you know that that way ticket does not belong to your project, you can go ahead and reject it and delete it from the system entirely. There's going to be some pre-canned messages in here for these, but you can always type your own or you could use these and, you know, change the, uh, the text in here. But there's just a, this basically is a way to reject a ticket and you, that basically puts it back on the contractor to fix and re-upload and resubmit that ticket for you. Manny, can you hold here for just a moment? I think it's important for a, a city representative to uh, heighten their awareness to some common inaccuracies we find when we review these tickets. You may want to focus on how this facility received the material. So one element of compliance Manny indicated is, is it the right facility? Did they bring it to the right facility? Yes, that's correct. Mixed C and D debris, waste manager, that all syncs up. But you want to read the receipt to see how waste management received the material because the ticket may say it was received as trash, but the contractor logged it here as mixed C and D debris. That's a big difference in outcome. If the facility received it as trash, it was transferred to the landfill. If they print on the ticket that it was received as construction debris, which this has on, on line one of the ticket, then um, it is uh, awarded the recovery rate for that facility. So the, and for that material type for that matter. So that's really important to, during your reviews, scrutinize the ticket to ensure that the facility received the material either as the source separated concrete, it'll say concrete or it'll say wood or it'll say metal, it'll give you the ton amount or that the material was received as C and D debris. It's a big red flag if you're seeing tickets with trash or refuse or garbage printed on them. That is something you want to inquire with the contractor about. Yeah, yeah. thanks James. And um, yeah, at this point, basically you're reviewing the tickets just like how James is explaining there. So just making sure that everything is, you know, accurate. Um, in some cases, if, if, you know, if they entered it as mixed C and D, it might be you know, faster to just, you know, click edit for them and then just change it to waste trash. And then, um, yeah, and then just go ahead and hit update ticket. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, this is a, an example of just two tickets to different facilities, right? But if we take a look at a different project, um, so I'm going to switch over to this project here. Um, this one, if you notice, it has 46 total weight tickets, right? That you you could uh, review the pro, uh, the tickets here, uh, looking through the you know like you see here Zanker. There's a total of nine tickets for Zanker. Excess recovery has five. SRDC has eight. So there's there's more tickets, more more uh, you know especially for Recology, they have 24 tickets uploaded already, right? So um, you, to view those full 24, you expand right here. And you're able to see all of those. So just keep in mind that there's going to be projects that have, you know, more weight tickets. And one kind of uh, tool that I like to use is this this here, export weight tickets to Excel. The reason I like to use this is because it allows me to kind of track my review. So by that I mean this this is just putting everything on a spreadsheet, right? So once you you have your your spreadsheet like this, maybe expand it or, or whatever you want to do to it. Uh, it, this is a CSV, so if you want to save it as a Excel spreadsheet, you'd have to, you know, save it as that. But essentially, what I'm trying to get to is you have your tickets here, and instead of viewing them through the through the the platform, you can actually just click here to view. It's going to pull open a web browser, and it's just going to um, show you the ticket here. So, so th this is the ticket. So, assuming that this is a good ticket, uh, which doesn't look like it's the best one, let's let's see if we can do maybe this one. I'll go ahead and just pull open this ticket. So th this is much better quality, right? So um, if this ticket checks out well, no edits need to be made to this. I don't need to reject it. The nice thing about the spreadsheet is you can just kind of highlight and say, okay, good to go. So 
this uh, this might be one way to uh, review the tickets. Uh, it, it all depends on if you prefer to do it that way uh, through a spreadsheet. That way you can kind of track your you know track as you're going, or um, again you could review them through the uh, through the system like this. This is a good um, moment to call out for our uh, city reps. Uh, contracts may spec, a lot of them do require monthly activity summary reports um, in order for the payments to be processed. Um, I know other projects don't, they may wait until completion of project, but Manny's demonstrating one way that you could fulfill that spec requirement or the contractor can, is they may be accountable for exporting that Excel file on a monthly day of basis and uh, emailing that to you. There's another um, report export that uh, Manny can show us in just a second, uh, but that's one way to comply with that sort of monthly activity summary uh, progress report. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so that is gonna be uh, this export to Excel. So export project data to Excel. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do it on this project. This is, the, this is um, our project that we've been working through uh, all morning. So I'll open this up. And this is going to give me a breakdown of uh, everything on a monthly basis. So uh, the report was created this date. So, um, you know, if you create this in November, you're going to have a November copy. Um, here's all the project details. And then basically on the left side, um, you could do either expand using these buttons here. Um, using these buttons here, I believe, or uh, you could just use these pluses, and this is going to give you a breakdown of all the tickets, right? So in this in this easy example, we have a ticket date from November 18th, concrete barrier, concrete recycling. This is the weight, ticket number. Click here to view. Uh, so it's, it's basically the same type of uh, you know link here that takes you to the weight ticket. This is the one that we uploaded, and so this is for November. If we expand this one, it's going to do December. And so if I have more ticket entries, it's going to it's going to place them under here for November. Um, this is just an example of one ticket in November, one ticket in December. Uh, but just you know, the main thing is this this spreadsheet on the left. You you expand the months this way. Um, there's a way to expand everything too, all at once, I believe. Um, but yeah, th this is that report. Um, we can do the other report here as well. So this is another project that's already in the system. Um, export to Excel. This is going to give you, um, you know, th that report. This one I think has what, like 50, 46 tickets. So this report, same thing here. Enable editing. So all the tickets that were uploaded for October 2018, we expand this. And now you have all those tickets here. So there was a date entry on October 1st, two of them on the 1st, on the 20th and the 23rd. Metal, clean wood, recology, um, the weight. You have a total of the weights there, how much was recycled, ticket number submitted by Cassandra, all that stuff. So th this is going to be your way to get that monthly report. Um, and you just, again, you extract it through the system using this export to Excel button. Um, and then, yeah, just to conclude everything, if we go back to our project, assuming that you've been reviewing the tickets on a monthly basis or, um, you know, you've, you've reviewed all the tickets, the goal is, um, and, and then any tickets that have been rejected, that have been fixed, the goal is to hit approve completed project. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. Really quick, though, you can reject the project if you want them to make several edits to the project. That way, you get, basically, you're getting this project out of your final queue, moving it back to the active if you reject it. That way, you just know that once they fix their stuff, they're going to be resubmitting, and you'll get that notification of, again of the new project submitted for final. Um, so that's one way to get the tickets fixed um, instead of individually rejecting those tickets, just rejecting the entire project telling them, please please verify all your ticket entries and um, fix fix this ticket or that ticket or fix your fix your tickets from cast metals, fix your tickets from Recology, um, and then resubmit for final again. But assuming that everything has been um, submitted correctly and you verified compliance and all that, then 
you're going to go ahead and approve completed project. And at this point, your project has gone out of the final queue and is now part of your completed projects. Projects don't erase, they're archived there forever. So if you ever need to access it, if you ever need to pull a report from it, that type of stuff, it's going to be listed there in your completed section. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole process of this. And yep, thank you very much. Um, I think we're ready Manny, for that, questions. That was uh, really excellent, Manny. Thank you so much for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Very comprehensive overview. And and it's also important to call out folks that there's even more bells and whistles in here that you'll discover as we activate your accounts and allow you to experiment in there. That's one of the next steps is to have you uh, create some test plans yourself so you can drive the car yourself. Um, and we'll have some user guides for you that'll help you with that. And we're available to support as well. But one of the bells and whistles I would call out is in that individual plan, um, you, the system does a great job of capturing every message exchange between you and the contractor. And so sometimes there might be multiple city reps communicating with the same party. Uh, there's no longer a disjointed communication thread. It's all logged there, requests for extra documents, manifest reasons why a ticket was rejected. Uh, the contractor's written explanation for going to an incorrect facility, all that could be captured in, in the system and it's tremendously useful. And now I'll just kind of close out here before opening up the Q&A and reiterate that every single form that is supporting uh, the regula regulations of Chapter 7 has been condensed into this online platform. Uh, so that is true for Form A, um, which is the request to go directly to uh, landfill. Uh, that's built in there by identifying the hazardous material and uh, having you require the manifest from the contractor. Form B is a very outdated practice. Projects rarely, if ever, go directly to a biomass energy generation facility, but we still have the ability to track that um, by identifying where they're going to bring clean wood. Uh, so that is in there. Form C, Manny did a really uh, smash up job on bringing you through all elements of Form C, the initial plan, the monthly progress uh, act, uh, activity that you can monitor, and then the final diversion uh, report summary, and then the worksheet of Form C and how that is all collapsed into this system, performing the calculations intuitively on your behalf. Form D, uh, facilities and transporters, you, you can change those uh, at any time. Um, just as long as you're going to the compliant one. And again, the system, uh, it controls the um, facility availability depending on the material type. So again, that is in there. And then form E, finally, uh, those conversion rates do not have to be done manually. They've all been compressed and happen on the back end of the system intuitively. So at this point, um, I'll turn it over to Eden and anyone else really who wants to comment, question, um, we do have a next step for us is to gather the email addresses for the participants on this call, activate your account so that you can go in and experiment. Um, your staff or team members, other city reps will be getting trained in January. They will get activated after they've gone through the training. And in between this session and that one, we will share a really comprehensive user guide that uh, is just a print version of what you heard here today. Uh, so at this time, um, again, thank you, Manny. Uh, that was an excellent job. Any any questions at this time? I'm taking that as a sign that that was uh, a really comprehensive overview, Manny. Um, we had a couple questions early on in the chat. Those seem to have been addressed. I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand now. Um, Eden, I see you've unmuted yourself. Would you like to close us out? I just wanted to thank you, James and Kalia and Manny for the tremendous effort that you've done to customize this platform and make it usable for our municipal departments, our municipal users. Um, I'm really excited that we're going to turn information into data and people will be able to better understand their impacts, influences, and just, just ways to be more successful with material reduction and recovery. Um, that it's, it's not just about paperwork. This is actual material that we are trying to keep out of the landfill and find um, 
higher and better uses for. And I think having this kind of tool is going to really help us um, make better decisions. So just wanted to thank you for this tremendous uh, lift that you've done and, the, and also this capability that you've given us as, um, as a city. So thank you. Thanks, Eden. And on behalf of the team that you called out, um, thank you again. Uh, and it has big, big props to Kalia and Manny for this lift. And um, yes, Damon, there will be a, uh, a link uh, for the recording that we can share. I think it'll be best if we distribute that when we distribute the user guide. So more to come. In the meantime, you all know how to email Eden or myself, um, and uh, we can field any questions or concerns that come up um, uh, as you think about this. Uh, until then, oh, let's see, I have a few questions, but probably will be answered by Kessie. Okay, Lena, yeah, and as you test it, um, Kalia, myself, uh, we are available to work out concerns on the fly, questions on the fly, so we'll be in contact over email. Um, so thank you all for participating. Uh, thank you, Eden, for coordinating. Thanks, Manny, again, uh, for, the, for the fantastic job, um, and be well, everyone.